Hi everyone and welcome back to your second lesson of math this week. Today we are going to continue on with partitioning to make you more confident with numbers to 100. So before we begin you're going to need all the resources that you had yesterday so you'll need your place value grids that you have made, you will need um, your part whole models, a pencil and some paper and some objects that you are going to use to represent tens and ones. Okay, so you need two sets of different objects for you to do this activity. So please, we are going to now start with our flashback four. You will need to pause the video after every section. So let's recap what we did yesterday. What I'm gonna ask you to do is using your objects at home and your place value grid, can you make these numbers please? So all you're going to do is using your grid, you will use your tens and ones to represent it. So if I was to make uh, 62, I'm going to put six ones in three, four, five, six, and I'm going to put six in my part here. Four, five, six. You're going to use objects. It's quite tricky for me. And then I'm going to do my ones, which was two. One, two. And I'm going to put them in one, two. Okay, so my number I've made is 62. You are now going to continue with the rest of them while you pause the video. Okay. So let's begin with our problem of the day. So we have had a concert at the Langley Academy Primary and we have decided to clear up and stack the chairs in piles of 10. How many chairs are there in total? And then B, show the number of chairs in your place value grid to me, please. So please stop the video now while you solve that problem. I'm going to go through the answers on the next page. So if we have stacked them in groups of 10, that means I can use a blank number line and I've jumped forward 10, 20, 30, 40, because I had four stacks, look one two three four and then i've jumped singly in my ones to represent my one two three one two three which means i've got 43 i've got four stacks of 10 which equals 40 and then i have my three that is left over so all i need to do is add these two together to make the total 43 we didn't count the chairs in ones, we counted them in tens because it's a lot easier and quicker for us to count. And then the second part was do it representing your 10 grids and one grid, and this is how it should have looked. So well done if you have solved that at home. You've got your four tens, which is your four sticks, and then your three ones that represent three single chairs. So, Yesterday we focused on making this diagram. So we made numbers using tens and ones. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it by putting numbers into the boxes for us. So if I have three tens, one, two, three, how much does that represent? Well done, it is 30. And if I add that to my amount of ones, one, two, three, four, five, That means I need, now need to put that into my part whole model. So 30 plus 5 is equal to 35. And as you can see, the only difference is, is the 1s overlap on to the 0. So if I was to move this, all I've done is covered the 0. Okay, you can't see very clearly. So if I put that underneath, all I've done is I've deleted the zero to put in my ones instead. Okay, so that's a quick way to solve what number you have made. We're going to do one more. So I'd like you to try and solve this one using your objects at home, please. I am now going to solve it. So how many tens have I got? One, two, three, four, five. So I have five tens which is the same as saying 50. So I'm going to put 50 into my first part and I'm going to add, 
how many ones? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to add eight ones. So I'm going to put my eight in. So that means I have made 58. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is you're going to get a piece of paper and you are going to draw it into your piece of paper or onto your piece of paper, sorry. So you will draw your place value grid and you will write the stem sentence. 23 has two tens and three ones, as you can see. And then underneath you will represent it using numbers to in your part whole models with your number sentence next door. So this is how it should look. And the questions that you're gonna to answer today are these. So you're gonna choose at least four of these to complete for me, please. So choose any colors at random you would like to do, and you're gonna represent it in this format here. So what I would suggest is, I'm going to snip it so you can see, and I might make it a little bit clearer for you on how I would like it to look onto your page, okay? So this is how I would like it to look. So I'm going to move these over a little bit higher so you can then choose your numbers at random and then I'm going to paste on how it should look down here. Okay, so this is how it should look. Okay, so I'm going to put it down there for you to see and then it'll save you going back and forth to see how it should look. Okay. So please stop the video now and choose at random and complete this activity. I am now going to move on to the next part of our lesson today. I've also added some additional questions in there for you. Okay, so this is the next part of your lesson. If you have done a lot of the first question, what I've suggested is stop and maybe do them the next day. So as a warm up for your next activity for your lesson three, I would suggest doing these activities. Question one. Question two. This is more of a reason problem solving. So you might need a little bit of support. And then your last question. Okay. And that is the end of our lesson for today. Please upload all your fantastic work onto Tapestry and come back tomorrow for your last lesson of the week. Bye, everyone.